So I picked up this unit knowing that it did not operate, but I thought I was up to the challenge. VFO does nothing. My RF gain does move the meter. So I suspect we either have a power supply issue or maybe the PLL is shot. So then I remembered a problem with a Kenwood 830 that I had years ago. It had the same symptom. The VFO wasn't working and there was no intelligence coming out of the receiver. And that turned out to be a problem on what they called the AVR board. Well, the 820 has the same thing. I got looking at this voltage regulator right here. It's a 9 volt regulator. And I can spin that transistor around in his connections. I suspect we just have some bad solder joints behind this board. Well, there's the back of the board. When I move that transistor, you can see the leads are cracked. So I'm going to repair that and see if it fixes it. So nope, didn't change anything. Figures, doesn't it? I'll be producing a full featured video on the repair of this R820 receiver. So looking closer at the R820, I believe this thing's been a victim of a lightning strike. You see that area on that rectifier board? There's a big old flash mark around that screw head. And if you take a look around the back of the radio, there's another indication. Let me show you. Here's the rear of the radio. You see that black mark? It's also on the top lid. Indication of a ground strike. Luckily, it didn't come in on the antenna, but I'm sure the power supplies on this radio took a hit. So another thing caught my eye. You see that circuit board? That's the digital display unit. It's actually pitched. And I believe the circuit board is contacting the chassis. So yep, it's going to be a project. The good thing is, is this thing is full of filters. And it's a rare bird, so it's well worth fixing. 